Dear friends and family in Christ, may God's grace, mercy, and his peace flow abundantly with you now and always. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for this day, this opportunity to worship in your house, the freedom to do so. Help us each day to value those freedoms. Help us each day to know that they are truly a gift from you. Lord, may we always look forward to opportunities you give to us to share your peace, to share your love, to share your mercies, so that all may know you as the Lord of peace. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Although its birthplace has been often debated, and there is an actual birthplace for it now, what was originally Memorial Day was originally Decoration Day. In fact, it was appointed just three years after the Civil War, and Major General John A. Logan appointed it as a day to really recognize something that was already happening. See, before the Civil War even ended, actually with the end of the Civil War, but before it ended, women were going out to the graves of their husbands, their sons, their brothers, their uncles, and they were laying flowers on those graves. They were decorating the cemeteries. And so the foundation of Memorial Day, originally Decoration Day, came about from people who wanted to honor those who had died in war, those who had died in the American Civil War. And it was not one side or the other, the Union side, the Confederate side, both sides wanted to honor their dead. It wasn't until much later that we started, we changed the name to Memorial Day and actually had a, the actual day, the dates that we have now. Originally, it was always supposed to be on May 30th. But back in 1971, that day became always the last Monday of May. 1967 marked the day that it became Memorial Day instead of Decoration Day. Many of you probably knew this already. And probably, honestly, more important than the day, the name of the day, the timing of the day, is the meaning of the day. Those flowers being set at the graves, those decoration of the graves, a reminder of something that we have known from the very beginning. Death and loss. Death and loss have been part of the, the world since our fall into sin. Ever since Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree, death and loss have been part of life. Ever since then, we've known death and loss, the pain thereof. We know that there are those who are willing to give of their lives, though. Those who are willing to give of their lives for something greater than themselves. We have several veterans in our congregation. And if you speak to them, they have various ways that they entered into the military. Some were drafted, some went willingly, but all of them fought with the same purpose because that's part of entering the military. They fought for the freedoms of our country. They fought to protect our peace. And so although they may have entered with different reasons and purposes originally, once they were in, they had that same purpose, to bring peace. And so rather ironic, isn't it? Because here we are fighting for peace. Do you see the irony in that? That in order to bring peace on the earth these days, in order to bring peace to our country, we have to fight for it. We have to send those men, those women, who serve our country faithfully into battle for it. Kind of think makes us think about our own lives. Because although we've never entered a battlefield, we certainly we know violence, we know anger, we know hate. We know that desire for peace. We crave peace. But it is a very foreign idea to most of us. We live in this world today and we, we go to various battles, sometimes in our families, sometimes with our loved ones. We know all too well Jesus' words in Luke chapter 12. They will be divided, father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. We know all too well that it is not just on a battlefield that death happens, that bloodshed occurs, but 
we need only turn on the news. And it doesn't have to be national news. Right here in the Imperial Valley, we can, see, we can hear about deaths that occur, murders that happen over very little things. We wish we could say that we didn't know hate. But even our children know hate. They learn it from an early age. To judge people by the way they talk, by the way that the color of their skin, to discriminate. We wish we didn't have the same violence that you might see on a battlefield, but how many of us know women or men who are in situations where they go home at night to domestic violence, fueled by anger and disappointment? Peace is a very foreign understanding for us. Peace, it seems to be far. We hear the words of Micah, and it almost seems as if he's, he's painting a picture of something we can't hardly imagine. And let's go back to Micah 4, because there he, he talks about the latter days. I encourage you to turn in your bulletin as we read from the verses 3 and 4. In those latter days, they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit, every man, under his vine and under his fig tree. And no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken. How much do we long for those latter days, when the mountain of the Lord reigns over all, when there is no longer fighting, no longer war, no longer anger, no longer hate, no longer hunger. No longer loss. It's a beautiful ideal, isn't it? But not one that's easy for us to wrap our minds around. It almost seems too good to be true, even in this land of freedom. And yet we know this promise to be the one that we all hold to. We know this to be the promise that we hold to that gives us strength for each day. Because we know that this is not talking about here on earth, but this is speaking about the last days. Those days when the Lord either calls us home or when He returns. When all of His enemies are finally vanquished entirely. So we no longer feel pain or loss or anger or hurt, but only know peace. And yet, we see little glimpses of that peace even amidst the anger, the hate, the violence, the pain. How often does God open your heart and your eyes to those small glimpses of peace, the promise of what we are waiting for? Think about it for just a moment. How many of you, at times, your life has been spinning out of control, things were out of your hands, and yet the Lord granted you peace? Peace that the world could not give you. Because the world's peace is empty. It's temporary. It might temporarily calm our fears, our hurts. But the peace from the Lord, it, it gives us that, that resolution to face tomorrow. That resolution to hang on. It's the peace that you see. And this is, as a pastor, I get to see this. It's, it's one of those beautiful th pieces of a, of a wife who, who holds the hand of her husband, who's, who's ca his body is, is writhing with cancer, but still, she knows the peace of the Lord. The husband who stands over the tomb of his wife, feeling as if she went too soon, shedding tears. The peace that comes, even looking at the world around us, wondering what will be of our next generation. What will happen to our children, to our grandchildren, to those who we love, those who we want to see succeed? What will happen to them? But putting it into God's hands, knowing that He is in control. Or the bills, the checkbook that won't ever balance, the bills that continue to loom. Knowing that even if we lose our house or lose our, our, our electricity is turned off, that we have a God who's still in control. We see these little glimpses of peace as his people. And we long that, to see those every day, don't we? 
How many of us wish that our whole lives were those lives of peace? How many of us wish that every single day that, that we would wake up and we would have that rest? For so many of us, it's a foreign concept. It's a foreign idea. For so many of us, it's because of where we put our faith and our trust. Because the peace that God offers to us, the peace that God promised to us, well, we cannot fully know it here on this earth because we live in this sinful world. It isn't a peace that cannot be obtained. It is a peace that the Spirit brings to us. And it is a spirit of peace that comes in our trust in the Lord. But so often for us, so often as the people of God, where is our trust? Where is our focus? It's on ourselves. If things aren't going my way, if things aren't going the way I think they should go, well, then things are not right. If I look at the world around me and my expectations are not being met, then there must be something wrong. The true peace in the Lord is recognizing that whether we have, as Paul says, plenty or we live in want, that He will provide. It's knowing that He is in control even when everything else is chaotic and out of control around us. It is knowing that He is preparing a place of peace for us. That will never end. But too often, our trust is in ourselves. Too often, too often peace eludes us. Too often, instead of being peacemakers, we are peacebreakers. And what do I mean by that? Jesus said that we should be, in the Beatitudes, that blessed are those who are peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. But too often, when things don't go our way, what is our response? When things aren't according to our plan, what do we do? We complain about it. We stir things up. We blame other people. We point the fingers. We even point our finger at God and say, God, you need to fix this. We demand of Him because things are not our way. And if we want true peace, though, instead of being the center, Christ needs to be the center of our lives. Christ must be the center of our lives for us to know peace. And as I said, we won't fully know peace till we're with Him in His eternal presence. But we will know the peace of each day, the peace of our Lord to get us through each day, to look at the world around us and see Him at work, to look at our finances, to look at our children, to look at our families, and to know that He is in control, to know that even when things are not going our way, that He, as He promises, will work all things to the good of those who love Him. For that is His promise to us. And even more important, True peace comes when we look to the cross. Because even though the event of the cross was anything but peaceful, it was chaotic, it was agonizing, it was ugly. But through those ugly events of Jesus' death, his beating, his betrayal, he gave to us the beautiful peace of life eternal. He gave to us the beautiful promise that this is not all that there is, but that one day we will be with Him, where wars will cease, where pain will stop, where there will neither be hunger nor thirst, but we will only be in His presence. What a promise we have. What a promise for us to hold to, to be peacemakers on this earth, to be those who bring the message Paul says in Romans, blessed are those, blessed are the feet of those who bring the good news. We are those who bear that good news message, that message of peace. And it, and it doesn't always have to be a full-blown gospel presentation. Hopefully it will lead to that where you can share your faith and share the promise. But sometimes it's going to be as small as a hug for a friend or loved one who's hurting. 
Sometimes it's going to be a listening ear when no one else will stop and wait. Sometimes it will be sharing a passage from Scripture. Sometimes it will be sharing where that peace comes from in your heart. As we celebrate Memorial Day, as we recognize that so many lives have been lost for peace, may you always remember that the greatest life that was lost for peace was Christ's. And that because he lost his life, we have life. But that he did not remain dead. He did not remain in the tomb. But he conquered death. And he has risen. And we too shall arise. Alleluia. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father and gracious God, we give thanks to you for each day of life that you give us on this earth. For each and every opportunity you give us to share your love, to share your peace. Lord, help us always to be prepared to share that peace with others. Lord, help us to be peacemakers and not peace breakers. So often it's easy to fall into that sinfulness. So often it's easy for us to fall into those self-centered attitudes, those desires that we get our way. Forgive us for those times. Remind us of your true peace. Remind us of your promise that we shall be with you. Lead us each day to share that peace, your peace in this world, your peace which transcends all human understanding. May it now guard our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen.